Okay, okay. Okay guys, here we are. We've just gained access through this gate here and this, we've got this gentleman here as the gatekeeper. And we're, we're off to visit a very rare example of one of the best, one of the best developed ring ditch fortifications left in Fiji. This one is managed by the National Trust of Fiji. Uh, a ring ditch fortification is a fortification with a ditch going around it. And this one's a slightly slightly more complex, but this is this is what was typical of uh, the ancient Fijian way of life. And so we're on we're on the estate. Uh, we're on we're at uh, Lavala Bay Estates, uh, and this is a gated area because it's so important. It's so so historically important. Um, so we're, uh, we're going to. Oh, sorry. We just need to. Check in with a few guys over here. As you can tell from a map put together in 1969, there were over 200 of these ring ditch fortifications in the southeast part of the main island of Fiji, Viti Levu. And here again, you can tell from these illustrations that the mode and type of these ring ditch fortifications was becoming increasingly sophisticated. Just to look at these aerial surveys taken in the late 1960s, the remnants of these ring ditch fortifications were still quite clearly visible. The one on the left is from Navua, and then one on the right is from day level. However, today with increasing road infrastructure, the urban sprawl and modern farming techniques, very little remains of these ring ditch fortifications, a testament to the ancient Fijian way of life. So, caretaker stays here? Yes. Uh, okay. So the, uh, they look after the okay. this area. Oh, so you, okay. So but you do, you just stay here temporarily, yeah? Yeah, this is when uh, it rains. Oh, when it Shelter okay. Purposes, oh, okay, yes. okay, okay. So, you've got so the he leads us to the uh, site. Okay, okay. 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 This is. And uh, so we're in the Greater Suva area. This is Lavala Bay, uh, and uh, like I said, this is the the last and the best preserved of ring ditch fortifications, probably in Fiji, Jerry. Um, uh, I think in Suva. In Suva, okay, in Suva. And there used to be so many of these uh, hundreds of years ago. In fact, they, they, there were so many of them until, until the, uh, the middle uh, of the 19th, middle of the 20th century, I should say. Uh, there used to be so many, but uh, they've also come to recent developments uh have come to the suburban sprawl uh, and so oh, okay so this is the uh this is the ditch here isn't it eh? Okay, wow. <laughs> There's some water in it. Uh, causeway. causeway, okay. Where's it? Oh, that's a causeway there, isn't it? Okay. So this is this is how ancient pigeons lived. There would have been um, uh, like a citadel with a, with a stockade with with um, with a, a, um, a, a fence of wood in, inside this. Uh, Beyond this ditch, at the, just on the other side. So, so the entrance to the uh, the ring ditch fortification was just along here. And uh, look at, well, this is how it's all done. This ditch would have been would have been stakes, sharpened stakes sticking out. Would have been water. There is a creek 
Where's the creek, Jerry? It's just not too far away, eh? You don't know what you think? The, the mangroves are... Oh, mangroves, just over. Okay. Okay, so the sea. Yeah. Okay, it's not a creek. It's yeah. the sea, is it? Okay, so uh, there is the sea just over there, Lalala Bay. And uh, <laughs> it's getting interesting, isn't it? Because they would have been growing. These, uh, these ring ditch fortifications would have, they were actually, they became so sophisticated, they were actually growing vegetables yeah. uh, inside and they would have had animals roaming around, um, but they became really sophisticated over a period of time. So this is it. This would have been the citadel, the inner yep. sanctum of the. Uh, this there's a second one, isn't there, Jerry? Is that, no. Um, I think I think this is just the. Uh, yeah. So this is a. Uh, Okay. Wow. It's another causeway, isn't it, Jerry? Okay. So imagine if you were attacking, you would have to run into. I mean, if you were, if you. If you couldn't go in through this end, mm. through the causeway, you would have to. I mean, you could, this would be impossible, wouldn't it, to to run into the um, the actual ditch right. itself? There would be sticks sticking out, sharpened sticks. And plus, uh, people the, throwing uh, the warriors. Eh? Yeah, the warriors. They, they would have been stationed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Along uh, the along, warriors will the yeah, houses right. would have been stationed along that's the right. causeways. Yeah, along the yeah, that's right. So there would have been warriors. There would have been mm. uh, there would have been a fence here, a stockade, and uh, spears would have been thrown at. Um, People attacking other rival villages. Rocks. Rocks, stones, everything would have been, you know, brought into action against uh, attackers. It's just uh, below is the, the mangrove uh, oh, okay. area. Um, okay, mangrove. Okay, so that's the mangrove area, isn't it? Yeah. And then the sea is just over there. Yeah. Okay, so a lot of these ring ditch fortifications would have uh, very close to streams and creeks and, and what have you, waterways. So we were speculating earlier, Jerry, whether there would have been a channel out to the sea see, yes. to, to, to create that... Um, uh, the moat, The eh? moat, yeah, to create the... the yeah, to fill up the moat. Because the sea is just over there. Mm. Uh, we can't quite see it. Uh, but um, I'm sure under, under all this soil, if more archaeological digs were conducted, they would you would find that there is um, there is some sort of channel linking from the sea to this moat. So this is a moat. This is the sort of uh, principle of um, um, fortified buildings and settlements all over the world. Castles are made like this, castles have moats, and it's just the most basic and elementary way of thinking on defending your community using a moat. Of course, this moat had uh, sharpened sticks, and this is where it all happened. And you've got um, a good little channel here. I don't know what, uh, I don't know if this is more recent. Maybe this was to, to drain rainwater. Uh, but uh, this is it. So incredible, isn't it, Jerry? A little slice of history here, isn't it? So let's have a look. I think, uh, as, yeah. I think if the uh, this could have been uh, more elevation. Yeah. And the, so, and the ditch would have been really deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I the, think because of erosion, erosion and uh, exactly. weathering so, and the rain uh, yeah, settles the rain. down, doesn't it? And that deep would have been far, yeah. far more steep. So I think it, eh? they have a real, they had picked out this spot just to view out into the sea. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now, Jerry, this was built by the uh, people from Wutia. In Rawa, uh, there's a there's a claim. Uh, yeah. I cannot confirm. Yeah, okay. Uh, from Vuti, uh, who, uh, 
Putia, Putia. Putia in Reo yeah. and also... Uh, Naitasiri. Uh, Naitasiri, okay. Kalambu. Yeah. Kalambu, people. yes. Yeah. And I think, I'm not too sure about the Super Bowl people, okay. but I think mainly those two... Uh, but this is Reo, isn't it? This is a, this is, Suba's in the province of Reo. Province of Reo. And so... Perhaps the Vithia people, because there was a famous battle in the middle yes, of the yes. uh, 1700s, wasn't yeah. there? Da. Yeah, no way in the Munda. So that was the famous battle that took place, and they, the uh, the people from Nekta City, from, from uh, yeah. the uh, the village that you mentioned, Jerry, uh, Kalam. what's it called again? Uh, Kalam, Kalambu. Yeah. Kalambu, they, they laid siege to this fort, right. and then it changed name, didn't mm -hmm. it? It changed name, um, because it was, uh, the original name, if I'm not mistaken, is Nevodal. Yeah. Nevodal, wasn't it? Isn't it? And then it changed its name after the battle to. Uh -huh. Sorry. Yeah. So it was initially called. Uh, it was ne 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 Nevodal. Nevodal. And then it changed its name to Nawai. Damu Damu. Sorry. Nawai 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 Damu Damu. Bloody sight, yeah. eh? Like a bloody. Bloodshed. Bloodshed, blood blood eh? Okay. Wow. It's a big butter here. And so, okay, the so huge uh, battle, the huge battle took yeah. place. Yeah, and so the people, these people from Make the City, um, were they just after territory? Were they after the resources? Do we know what what their what, was it? Some ancestral dispute between the two tribes? Because you know this is Rawa. This yes. area is Rawa, isn't it? Eh? And the people of Utia would have said, well, this has always been our land. Mm. So do we know why why they? Um, I think one of the uh, major uh, escalation was uh, the Mbau and Rewa Wars, eh? Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, so this is part of, because now, now, of course, they, they they fight on the rugby field. <laughs> <laughs> For the Fair Brother Trophy, don't they, eh? <laughs> but, but back then it was yeah. uh, it was pretty serious was stuff, wasn't it? Eh? Yeah, spears and... Yeah, spears and... Because oh, 300 people were killed, weren't they, yes. over here? And uh, it was um, pretty, uh, pretty devastating. Okay, I'm just going to... Okay, guys. Oh, sorry, sorry no, go on, go on, Jerry. No, no, go, go, go. Yeah, no. Okay, guys. So this, this is it. This is a, uh, this is me uh, bringing. Uh, there'll be a, a little epilogue to this. We're going to visit another ring ditch fortification. This looks like a mini ring ditch fortification here, doesn't it, Jerry? Look at this yeah. one here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're going to visit another one just off uh, Service Street in Su Suva, very close to the heart of Suva. This one is Ladala Bay, which is a. Uh, which is a, a, just a, a short drive from downtown Suva. But this one, this, the next one we're going to visit will form an epilogue uh, to this vlog. But um, just, uh, just showing you what, uh, just these final few impressions of uh, this ring ditch fortification. Look, we've got, uh, it rained heavily on Monday. And thankfully, and thank, thank goodness it did, because it shows you what it was, would have been like with, uh, when these, uh, when these were properly moated. They would have been much deeper, as I said. There would have been stakes sticking out, and it would have been, uh, you know, it would have been uh, much more water in there. But um, that, that gives you some idea what it's like to visit these incredible. And that, there's, um, there's a bigger, it's a broader perspective there. So that's it. That's uh, Jerry and I signing off from uh, Lavala Bay. Ring Ditch Fortification, one of the last and one of the best preserved of the Ring Ditch, Ring Ditch Fortifications left in Fiji. Quite an experience that, Jerry. Any final thoughts, Jerry? Yes, just an amazing uh, day to come and uh, oh, capture well, this. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, Jerry. Close to the heart of Suva, in an area just off a road called Service Road, amongst a clump of old colonial residential buildings, there is the remains of a very large ring ditch fortification. Okay guys, so we're, we're exploring ring ditch fortifications in Fiji, but here in Suva. So we're in the uh, Suva area, we're um, we're, we're in an area, now I'm with a guy called Jerry from the uh, Fiji Museum Library. Uh, we, with it, we're in an area that used to be a ring
ditch fortification that used that, that existed hundreds of years ago um, and uh, the uh, we're actually standing on the on the the summit of the 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 fortification so this would have been a fort this around me, around me are old colonial era buildings this would have been an accommodation block back in British colonial times and we're, we're actually at the summit of this ring ditch fortification now you can see right round there is this massive absolutely massive ditch I'll take you uh, this is Jerry here Jerry from the Fiji Museum Library who's a researcher and very knowledgeable on these uh, on these masses, but this is, this is massive, isn't it, yes, Jerry? Yes, it is. So, what area are we? What area are we in, Jerry? We are actually in uh, a part of Suva. Yeah. So this is in Service Street. What street is this? Uh, Service Street, S along Service Street. Service yes. Street. Okay, okay. And over there is Sun Yat-sen School. That's Sun Yat-sen School, isn't Yat -sen, it? Yeah, Yat-sen. Oh, Yat-sen. Sorry, so Yat-sen School. Uh, so, and look at the size of this ditch. Incredible. So this is what. Um, the ancient Fijian world would have been would have looked like with the uh, ring ditch fortifications, and you you can just see the way the land uh, slopes away to the bottom. It's quite a steep fall, although you know it, a lot of this has been eroded over the years, and it's it's you know it's probably you could probably easily walk down there, but that's that's um, that is exactly what it was like for uh, hundreds of years. And so, isn't that incredible, Jerry? It's massive, isn't it? Absolutely massive. Look how steep it is, all the way to the bottom there. But I mean, it's manageable. You can easily walk, yep. walk down it, eh? Easily. And of course, in the olden days, with, uh, with the ancient Fijian world, with, uh, with uh, Fijian fortifications, is that you would have had, it would have been moated along the bottom we're not absolutely sure but we think that's the case here it's quite typical across the board with uh, ancient Fijian fortifications there would have been a moat along the border along the, the along the, the the bottom there which formed the border around this fortification and that moat would have had spikes sticking out of it to, uh, to deter potential attackers and in order to get here they would have had to have uh, people visiting the fort, people uh, uh, attackers would have had to have negotiated either crossing that moat, which, which would have been impossible, or walking along a causeway. Do we know where the causeway is, Jerry? Here. Oh, that's the causeway. Okay, so this is absolutely fascinating because what has happened here is that the causeway is actually the road we came through to get here. That, that's, these are all these old government buildings. And what the, the British did back in, the, back in colonial times is they, they simply built the road into this area, which became government quarters. Uh, and they built that road in through what used to be the causeway, uh, which, is, which is absolutely fascinating. So they, there you go, that's the road into this, this area. And uh, that is also, that was the causeway. You can see there is this, uh, the ditch, uh, it's just over there. Should we go have a look in the, in the just around the corner, Jerry. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. This is amazing, isn't it, right? So, there were numerous sites like this across the, uh, the south and the southeast of the main island of Itilebu, around the railway delta, um, traversing um, the, um, the area between Nosori and Suva in, in Navua, uh, in uh, Korovo, uh, and um, uh, so um, 
Yeah, I've, I've seen pictures, um, aerial surveys. There would have been um, lots of these old fortifications um, along the Roa River. And uh, this is extraordinary to, to, to find this one here. So we're just going to try and work our way around it. It's, it's, this is, I mean, look at these old colonial buildings, but look at, I mean, look how, this, this, this would have been, we're actually, we're actually at the, the, the summit of this old Fijian hill fort. So this is, this would have been the summit. There would have been um, a wooden palisade. Andrew dear. There would have been um, a wooden palisade going around the, the, um, the inner parts of the citadel. And these, these things started springing up around about the turn of the 14th century. And uh, with the passage of time, they became more sophisticated. And so this one, I don't know the exact extent of uh, how, how sophisticated this one is, but... Um, Morning dear, sorry, we're, <laughs> we're just looking at this old hill fort, uh, the, you know, the, um, the ditch there. Is there a stream going down there, dear? There, is there a stream? There is a stream, isn't there, right? Eh? There's no stream there, is there? No, no stream. Oh, okay. Oh, there, Jerry, there is a stream there. I can hear water. Yeah. Okay, so let's see if we can get a closer look. Oh, there you go. Oh, wow. Okay. So there is... There is actually... There is water. There is a stream. Uh, I'm going to have to consult with Jerry about this. Um, But, uh, you know, let me just, I just talked, wait for Jerry. Jerry's just talking to the young lady. And uh, look at this, look at this, son. That over there, you can see where the, the sides slope down, which marks the boundary of the school. That over there, going all the way round, is the extent of this very large Fijian hill fort. Um, uh, incredible, isn't it, Jerry? Isn't that amazing? Incredible. And we're only a few minutes drive away from the capital, from, from Suva, from downtown Suva. We're actually in the greater Suva area. Wanna can we go down to it? Yeah. Okay. So what we've got here, we've got these, um, oh. what would possibly we could be looking at, I'm, I'm not absolutely 100% sure, not 100% sure, there is a, a pipe there for, uh, for drainage. Now, as to whether this stone has been excavated in more recent times, or is the remnants of ancient Fijian archaeology, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you, but I can just tell you as much as I know, and that is that what we're looking at here marked the bottom of the fortification. So this is the fortification that rises up in that direction where Jerry is standing and where those buildings are. And I'm being bit by mosquitoes, so I think it's time to go up. But, um, so we're looking at an incredible piece of ancient Fijian technology and history in this uh, this um, 
this fort. So, very interesting, Jerry. Oh, oh thank you, Jerry. Knock it up. Well, it's quite an ordeal for me to come up. Can you imagine what it was like in the hundreds of years oh, ago, Jerry? It would have been steep. It would have been a lot steeper as well, eh? And, and all that bottom there would have been uh, stakes, sharp, sharp-ended stakes. You know, you wouldn't be able to see. In the... It's it's a it's a good site. They actually picked out a was it because it was close to a stream and yeah yeah yeah. So that water. they would have made use of that stream, wouldn't they? Eh? Because a lot of these sites. These fortifications are near creeks or rivers, yep. aren't they? And this one isn't. But we know now why, because there was a creek there. Or there, there is a stream there. And uh, that's incredible. Got bitten by a few mosquitoes, but never mind. <laughs> oh, incredible. So there you've got a, a rich slice of Fijian history. Andrew, what's all? Andrew, what's all? Andrew, what's all? Andrew, what's all? 